Do you want to become a Python developer? With an impressive salary starting at around $92,000 per year and the flexibility to often work from home, it's no wonder that this job has become insanely popular. But the question is, can this dream be achieved without formal education or experience? The simple answer is yes. While it may not be a straightforward journey, with the right mindset, planning and without wasting precious time, you could find yourself in your first job within less than six months. Today we're going to discuss the fastest route to become a Python developer, we'll uncover how to secure a full-time position, all while steering clear of the common mistakes that often stop aspiring developers. Let's get started. So why should you learn Python? With a tight deadline of just six months to transform from a beginner to a job-ready developer, it's essential to make wise choices. Here's where Python shines as the programming language of choice for those eager to fast-track their careers. Let's get into the five main reasons to learn Python. Number one, it's highly in demand. It's used across many different industries and it translates into an abundance of job opportunities, making it a practical choice for those looking to get a job fast. Python also has an active community of developers, and this means that help, guidance, and shared knowledge are available, which is going to make solving problems much easier and learning faster. Python syntax is also simple and easy to learn for beginners. This means a smoother learning curve for you, allowing you to grasp the concepts quickly and then move over to more complex tasks without having to spend months just trying to understand the basic syntax. Unlike some languages that require extensive lines of code for even simple tasks, Python allows you to express complex ideas concisely. This efficiency not only saves time, but also makes code more maintainable and readable and way easier for beginners to handle. Python also has a rich ecosystem of tools and libraries that can help you develop almost any type of application, whether it's for web development, data science, or even blockchain, Python has you covered. Now, as you set out to conquer Python, it's crucial to approach your learning journey with clear and proven strategies. Here is a roadmap to guide you through the learning process, along with some insights to help you avoid common beginner mistakes. Firstly, many beginners just fall into the trap of spending excessive time researching courses, watching videos, or just browsing around on the internet. The key to success is to cut through all the noise, search for well-reviewed Python courses, and choose one that includes a lot of hands-on practical exercises. You can learn for free on YouTube, or just take an online course. I personally recommend Coursera, they have a lot of great resources from different universities and companies. Next, learn by doing, not just watching. Treat your shows and programming course differently from a Netflix series, I want you to actually engage actively with the content, code along, and really apply what you've learned. It's really important that you pause, rewind, and rewatch if you need it, but ensure that every hour of watching translates into real, hands-on coding experience. This is going to help you learn so much faster. Motivation also fuels learning, so I would really advise you to select courses that include projects that genuinely interest you. Let's say you have an interest in finance, then do something in finance. When you enjoy what you're doing, you're more likely to stay committed and actually complete the course, and it's also great to have relevant hands-on industry experience from these projects when you apply to a job in a company. Now let's quickly talk about hackathons and their beginner's gateway to real-world experience. Once you've laid out the foundation with a couple of courses and have begun to build your skills, it's time to take your learning to the next level. Hackathons present an exciting opportunity to do just that. Here's why you should consider participating in a hackathon and how to make the most out of your experience. So first, what is actually a hackathon? If you're new to the concept, a hackathon is basically a collaborative event where developers, designers, and other tech people come together and work on a problem. These events typically last between 24 and 48 hours, they're not that long, and they focus on solving real world problems. Hackathons offer a unique opportunity to work in teams with other people, and they teach you how to collaborate and how to communicate properly, and those are some really important important skills. You learn how to cooperate with other developers and designers and that's really going to enhance your ability to work effectively in a group setting and that is something that just doing projects isn't really going to help you with. And that's very very important when you look for a job that you're able to show that you can work in a team and as a group. Hackathons often also center around real-world projects, and that's going to allow you to apply what you've learned and your real problem-solving abilities to a practical scenario. And this practical experience is highly valued by employers and can set you apart in the real job market. They also offer great networking and mentorship opportunities because participating in hackathons can expand your professional network and connect you with more experienced developers. Sometimes you might even find a mentor or a really important connection that can help you guide your growth and accelerate your process and even become somebody 
somebody that helps you land a job in the future. It's really, really important to start making these connections early and a hackathon is a really good way of doing so. Now, of course, there are different types of hackathons. So I think it's really important that you choose projects and hackathons that align with your interests. To maximize your enjoyment and engagement in the hackathon, pick hackathons that feature projects that you're really passionate about. Whether you like creating games or crypto apps or anything in between, it's really important to align with your interest. That's going to make the experience more fulfilling and you work much better. Now, as you gain confidence in Python and more experience as a developer, you're still only on the beginning of your journey. So here's really important that mastery requires continuous growth, experimentation and practice. And here's how to effectively build your skills and avoid common roadblocks. The first thing is to embrace diverse challenges. Don't limit yourself to one type of task. Explore various coding challenges ranging from simple to complex. This diversity will not only keep you engaged, but also really broaden your skills and prepare you for different scenarios in the professional world. Because there it's really hard. You don't really know exactly what the problems you're gonna be working on. So the more experience you have and the more diverse challenges that you faced, the better you're gonna be in the real world. I would also recommend that you utilize coding platforms because websites like Lead Code or Code Wars offer lots of coding questions that mirror those asked by real companies in an interview. And these platforms provide automated test runners, allowing you to rigorously test your code and ensure that it's actually correct. And that's really, really important. You're gonna be spending a lot of time testing your code, but it's also important to get help doing so. I would also start small and scale up. Begin with easy level questions and dedicate consistent time to practice Python. If you still find yourself stuck, it's okay to seek solutions, but make sure to fully comprehend them before you move on. And don't just look at the solution and then not do anything with it. Slowly move over to medium level challenges as you become more and more confident in Python. Reflect and learn from your mistakes. If a question surprises you, don't just move on, reflect on what actually went wrong, research the solution, like I said, and practice similar projects until you feel comfortable with it. And this approach is gonna really help you understand it and actually retain it for much longer. Many beginners just find themselves stuck at a particular stage, unable to progress. So break through this barrier, just constantly challenge yourself and seek out new learning opportunities. Now, as you grow more comfortable with Python and you start to progress in your coding abilities again, it's time to turn your attention to another crucial aspect of your journey, which is the job interview process. And here's how to successfully do this and land a job. First of all, know when to shift gears. One common mistake among beginners is that they just get stuck in the practice phase. They never actually realize when it's time to start interviewing. Recognize that gaining relevant industry and interview experience is just as valuable as actually practicing and learning theory. And it's something that you should do. As a beginner, you should also focus Focus on building a strong portfolio. Start showcasing your projects on platforms like GitHub or GitLab. And a strong portfolio, it doesn't really only demonstrate your coding abilities, but also reflects your passion and commitment to the field. And that is very important. As a beginner, your portfolio is one of the key things when looking for a job. And recruiters really care about this. They don't have much else to look at. So your portfolio really has to stand out from the rest. The other key part is your resume. Your resume is your first impression. So make sure that it actually counts. Include a link to your portfolio, highlight your your skills and projects and ensure that it's well structured and free of errors. I would also make sure that you're not using this resume for other job applications. It should be 100% tailored to your career as a developer. And if you're doing something else, then make a separate resume. It's really important that this resume is 100% dedicated to your developing career. Also, I just want to clarify something and this might be stressing you out. It's completely natural to face rejection in your first few interviews. Instead of viewing these as failures, treat them as valuable learning experiences. Analyze what you did wrong or what actually went wrong in the interview, research the correct answers, and use this knowledge to improve your next interview. You are going to make mistakes, you're going to be put into difficult situations, and you're not going to have all the questions when you first start out. I want you to understand that, and don't be discouraged if things don't go the right way. They're going to go better and better and better, and just like when you program with more experience, you're going to be able to do much better. One tip that I have for you, and that I've actually used myself, is that you can record yourself answering some interview questions, for example, using your phone and just set it up and then look at yourself after or you can use websites like big interview and then you can use this video to see what mistakes you made if you look scared if you don't really look into the camera if you don't answer the questions properly whatever it may be that can be really advantageous so definitely set up a camera and record yourself as you practice interviewing and you don't even need an expensive camera you can just use your phone now when it comes to the actual questions tech companies often ask theoretical questions during these interviews that may not really seem relevant to real world scenarios and even though you can just search for 
for them on Stack Overflow, they just want to check that you have this basic knowledge. And being prepared for these questions can really help you stand out and demonstrate your comprehensive understanding of Python. As a beginner, it's really important to know the fundamentals of Python and programming. We don't want to lose the job because we forgot to study like data structures or something. The key is to keep practicing, whether it's about interviewing or doing anything else. Remember, every interview brings you one step closer to your dream job. Stay committed and the rewards will come. You're not the first one to do this, and you're certainly not the last either. Just keep going and you will succeed. That is all for this video, but we're not done. Subscribe if you like this video, and I'll see you in the next video right here on the screen. Just click that video and I'll see you there and subscribe.